In my last episode of Amazing World Wonders, I looked at precision firearms, smart bullets that can actually change trajectory. But in this episode, I'm taking ammunition a little bit further. Railguns. If you know weapons and you know guns, you've probably heard about railguns, and maybe even fantasize about owning one yourself. How's it going guys? My name is Dave Wapple and welcome to Amazing World Wonders where every single Friday I always look at a new technology or structure or something from around the world that just makes our mind go what the heck, how was this thing made and how is it used? But today I'm talking about railguns and they're just so amazing. I've seen them in films and they're a bit of a kind of a fantasy sort of thing but believe it or not they actually exist today. So first of all, what is a railgun? What makes it different from the rifles that all the other soldiers use today? Well, a railgun, basically how it is different from a cannon or conventional weaponry is that conventional weaponry is where you have a bullet that is being charged by gunpowder or something similar. Once this bullet is charged, it travels down a barrel to fly through the air and hit its intended target. But railguns, they don't really work the same way. The way they work is through magnets. And how it works is in a layman's terms, they take that magnetic projectile and it goes through the barrel, slinging it towards its target. Now within the barrel, they have these little tiny rails that emit a very high amp current. The projectile, which is magnetic, travels from rail to rail to rail within the barrel, building up momentum until it leaves. And that is why it's called a railgun. Now, are they in use today? That is a very good question. And the best answer that I can give you is yay and nay, kinda. Because although there's been a lot of testing going on, in 2018, it was heavily rumored that China's ship, the Haiyang Shun, had an experimental EM rail attached onto it, making it the first ship to have installed some form of working rail gun. The US, which is one of the countries that is one of the leads in technology, has plans to put this on naval ships and test it, but there's nothing conclusive as of the time of recording this episode. And if these facts are true, China has beat America in the EM railgun race. And for those who might doubt it, well, I can see your point, but this technology has been tested quite a bit before. And as well, the gun emplacement on this landing craft is unlike any other gun that we've seen in history. But it's not just the look of the weapon that gives us the idea that maybe China has done it. It's also these giant battery packs that are located on the ship. Now, what we do know about EM railgun technology is that it requires a lot of power to use it. And if you're using it on a ship, you need a lot of battery power and storage. And that would basically be big battery packs similar to ones that might be here. Now, America has also done a test of what is known as the General Atomics Blitzer Railgun, which worked extremely well against ballistic missiles. This particular railgun has been stated that it can integrate with any form of satellite to ground radar and also has two times the range of most rocket launching artillery systems. But one of the most impressive tests for a railgun was done by the U.S. Department of Sweden's BAE company. Which I'm actually not really surprised that Sweden is somewhat behind this because, well, as I talked about it in episode one, I talked about Sweden's adaptive technology that can make tanks virtually impossible to see through infrared scopes. But however, jumping back to the railgun issue, this company had a successful test of its railgun for the Navy. During this test, it showed that it had 10 times the range of conventional Navy cannons coming in at a range of 220 miles. Now, this railgun was known as the 32MJ or Megajoule prototype or the Electromagnetic Laboratory Railgun. And this test was conducted in 2007. Of course, there have been other tests that have happened throughout the years and done at different megajoule levels. But the problem that we look at today is not just power when it comes to EM railguns. It's also the durability of their barrels. For example, most railguns cannot continuously fire 
And earlier days, there was a problem that the barrels had a very short lifespan. Although some officials have stated that this problem has been fixed, with some rail guns improving their barrel lifespan from 10 shots per barrel to now doing over 400 shots. However, those statements should be taken with a grain of salt because the one thing that wasn't stated is how big the shot was and how powerful the mega jewel was. The more powerful, the less of a lifespan the barrel has. And on top of that, to keep up with current technology, an EM railgun should be able to shoot six rounds a minute and be able to fire 3,000 rounds in a lifespan. And currently at this time, EM railguns are not capable of doing this. Another big challenge for railguns at this time is guidance. This of course is getting better as research continues. Most railguns do not meet the requirements to develop a package to do things like hit incoming missiles. That being said, the General Atomics railguns seem to improve this problem. However, it is still off from where governments would like EM railguns to be. Either way, this is technology that is new to us. And just like the bullet and the cannon, it took years to perfect. Keep in mind, at one point, bullets and cannons were even round in their ammunition, and even V-2 rockets at one point didn't have the range. And now, missiles can be fired or launched from any place in the world and strike anywhere in the world. And in its current state, these EM railguns are on the brink of forever changing the world in how we fight. And therefore, they are being inducted as an amazing world wonder. Thank you for watching, guys. My name is Dave Walpole, and if you really like this episode, be sure to give us a big thumbs up. On top of that, feel free to leave a suggestion or just a comment down there. And if you really like this series, you might want to check out our playlist on Amazing World Wonders. We do this every single Friday where we look at new technologies from around the world. But thanks for watching. I'll see you guys later. Bye. So here's that playlist that I was telling about. Remember, every single Friday is a new episode. And yeah, if you haven't done it yet, hit that subscribe and that bell notification. And until next time, you guys have yourself a great day.